guys. Um, waiting for everyone to come on. Hi, everyone. Hello. Thank you for joining me this night. Hi. Thank you for joining me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Hello. <laughs> hello. 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 Hiya. Ashley from St. Lucia. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, so, welcome, everyone, because I'm not going to take too much of our time. Hello. 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 I'm not going to take too much of our time. I don't want to spend too much time here. I've got loads of questions that you guys sent in. And I am thinking I'm not going to be able to answer everything this night. So what we're going to do is, I'm, I think we're going to like do it in two parts. So maybe one part this week, and then we do the next part next week, Friday, same time. Let me know if you think that's a great idea. But let's carry on. So if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is Biola, um, a balloon artist based in London. Um, and I've been in the business for like 10 years now. Um, my YouTube channel, I think I've been on YouTube for like four or five years now, I think. But I started taking YouTube serious like a year ago, yes. Um, so today we're just going to talk about the theory aspect of the business because a lot of times we, we just see the practical on YouTube, but we do not know the the theory aspect of it which is really really important because if you're in business i'm thinking you're in it to make money i'm not going to be taking questions on here because i already asked people to drop in their questions um but what we're going to do is if i don't answer all your questions this week we can continue next week if you guys think it's a great idea then we continue next week. I don't go, I don't want to be here for too long. So I'm going to go to the first question, which was from um, Live Love Lola Smith. Um, so your first question was, is Balloons by Party Heaven your only job? Yes, Balloons by Party Heaven is my only job. Um, I would say I could take up some like, part-time work sometimes, you know, but my main job is balloons by party when I do nothing else. Um, the second question is, how did you fall into balloon styling? Yes, how did I fall into balloon styling? Um, 10 years ago or like, yeah, 10, 11 years ago, I decided I wanted to go into the events industry and... I didn't know what aspect of events I was going to go into, but I just knew I wanted to go into events. And there was a lady then that, you know, used to do balloons and I loved what she was. She was doing it really different. It was unique. It was different from everything I, I, I see everywhere. And I thought, okay, why don't I, you know, give it a go and see what what's going to happen. Um, and... I went for, a, in fact, I was going to go to a train with a lady, but, um, hi from Brazil, hello, hello, <laughs> so I was going to go for a training, um, with the lady, but I changed my mind and went with some other guy, um, I've forgotten his business name now, and that was where I got my first training, so I went for an actual training before I started at all. And the training then, 10 years ago, cost me almost £300 or so. Um, yeah, and after that, you know, I said, telling my friends, oh, I now do balloons. So, um, three friends gave me the first opportunity to create, and that was it. And I just, and funny enough, I was, I was pregnant with my son then when I went for the training. In fact, the first job I did, which was a wedding, I was heavily pregnant when I did it. Um, though I wasn't getting paid for it, but it was, you know, I was helping on the job and it was an experience for me. So it was, that was my first major, you know, major time in balloons you know no not in balloons in decor because i didn't know if i was going to be doing balloons and then i think i got my friend's kids 
birthdays and yeah and i just said doing balloons for kids parties because then it was there it was you know balloons for kids balloons was known for kids parties years ago compared to now whereby you do it for baby showers um bridal showers um then they used to do it for corporate events and some weddings but it wasn't as big as it is now um, so yeah, that was how I got into it and I just kept at it. I kept doing it well. I would go for trainings. I would research. I would, I, di I didn't used to use YouTube. I didn't even know there was, was there YouTube then? Yeah, I'm sure there would have been people on YouTube then, but there was, it wasn't, there wasn't anything on YouTube for me. Um, so I didn't even do YouTube. Um, I just used to just go online and just follow the lady I mentioned that I really liked her work and and that was it and I got opportunities from friends word of mouth people started and I think because I've always had this flair for colors which is a plus I think I had and yeah that was about it let me leave that question now okay so the next question is how do you know how many balloons needed for a garland is there a technique to knowing this and working this out okay so with garlands, how do I know how many balloons I need? And um, because I I have done um, how would I put it? Because I've done garlands so many times, I've been able to like figure out like how many I would need per job. But what I always do is this: I always make sure I have a. If I was using like five colors, I'll make sure I have like. Five, uh, all the sizes, well, sorry, one bag of each size in every color. So, for instance, if I was going to be using pink, yellow, blue, orange, I would have a bag of yellow in five inches, yellow in 12 or 11 inches, yellow in 16 inches, yellow in 24 inches, or 36 inches. So I make sure I have, um, and aside from that, I would always have like an extra bag at home that I use as backup. So yeah, that is how I, I measure. And because I've done it so many times too, you know, the big balloon bags that you see me use in my videos, I know the amount of balloons that would fill, not the, I don't know the amount, but I know once that bag is full, if I have like two full bags, I have enough balloons to start me off. And then when I get to the venue and I think I need more, then I'll blow up some more. But I make sure I have two big, two large full bags. Guys, please share this video. If you're just coming on, share, 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 guys. Share so that more people can come on because I'm dropping nuggets this night. Um, so next question is, is there a technique to know? Okay, yeah, I've answered that of working it out yeah so that's how i work it out but another technique of working out your balloon is i know of two people that have got two great um i'll call them not apps but like um systems back in the days qualitex website used to have like a balloon calculator but they don't have it anymore i don't think it's on their website anymore but there's this guy that i use is it's it's like um you download it like a software um i've forgotten the first one the one i used i i bought i bought it it's from ken stillman um yeah it was uh yeah it's called deco builder that was what i had that was what i bought i bought it like a hundred dollars or so some years ago like seven years ago i used that in calculating my balloons that i need and i use it in designing too um, then someone else has built another one, which is um, Chris Adamo. He has a, a, a tool software. Um, his website is called Balloons Online. I'll just search for Chris Adamo. Google his name, and I'm sure his website will come up. He has he developed a software where you can use to calculate balloons, even with organics. So if you want to, once you know the measurements of what you're doing, you can use it. And I think you pay monthly for it. With the Ken, Ken Stillman one, the one I bought, I, it was a one-off payment. Um, and I don't know if it's 
still one-off payment. Um, but with Chris's one, I think you pay monthly, like $5 or so, I can't remember, or $10, I don't know. But yeah, so you could use it to like um, design your balloons. If you want to do ceiling balloons, if you want to do garlands in a big room, you can calculate with the software. So, Chris Adamo, please write it down and you can come back to listen, you know, you can come back later to listen to what I've said in this video. Um, so the next question, what's the best way to transport props and balloons? Um, for me, I transport my, I, I drive a 4x4. So my 4x4 allows me to take my props and my balloons and even, you know, whatever tools I take because it's, it's kind of like big. So you need to have a van if you don't have a 4x4, like a seven-sitter. Um, that's the best way to transport. So it's either you hire a van or you buy a van if you can. Um, or you drive a very, you know, big car. My balloons, I put them in a big bag. The balloon sacks I use, I get them from the wholesalers. Um, so yeah, that's what you can use to transport your balloons. That's the best way to transport it and your props. So your props, you just lay it flat. Like I, I, I lay flat in my car because most of my props, you can put the, pull them apart. And when you get to the venue, you put them together. So um, then you put your balloons on top and, you know, I'm good to go. Um, I, I could do like two or three jobs in a day if I wanted to, as long as I've spaced out my timing. So what I just do is I fit all the balloons in the house and finish one, come back home or fill the car with as many as I can for like two jobs and I'm good to go. Um, how long do you typ typically spend blowing up balloons and then setting up? Uh, blowing up balloons, um, like I mentioned earlier, I blow up my balloons from home. I, I, I could blow up my balloons if I have a big job over the weekend or if I have like two, three jobs over the weekend, I blow up my balloons from like Wednesday and I bag them up and I just keep them in my house. You know, if I've got, if I'm going to be using like twisted balloons, I could do those ones from Tuesday and I bag it up and it stays fresh because I already use quality balloons. So it will stay intact till when I want to use it as long as I bag it up. So I bag it up and I keep it in the house, in my living room or in my kids' room, anywhere I can fit balloons in, basically. Um, so, and then for... Set, so timing for blowing up, I don't really calculate because I do it in the comfort of my own, watching TV, you know. But there are times I, I have to go and blow up the balloons at the venue if I, maybe I, I have too much, like I, maybe I have like two, three events in a day and I can't blow up balloons in my house. Then I would go on to the venue and blow up. And with the venue blowing up, and setting up it should take me like max three hours that's max and three hours because you get clients asking you questions distracting you you know while you're working and all of that so you know that will take out of your time and you can't help it because they would want to like ask your opinion about oh where should that go where should this go do you use iPhone bags or regular bags i use regular bags they're kind of they're balloon sacks they're called balloon sacks they are really big, massive. I don't know the size. I don't know the measurement, but they are quite massive. That's what I use for my balloons. They are really big. And it could take, I think it when, if I block my balloons, uh, organic balloons, I could fill it with 100, um, 11 inches or 12 inches. And it would still fit in some 12, um, some 24 inches. It's quite big. Okay, next question is, how do you work with clients' color skin? Okay, with the colors, color skin. Um, now, originally, clients would, you know, come back in the days, we didn't have this trend of colors that we have now. With the way, you know, with the way organic has come, we now do, yeah, heavy duty garbage, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, they're quite good. Um, and so also, <clears throat> some I've seen people mention um, large um, refuse sacks that you can get them from Amazon, the really big ones, the really bean bags. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, pardon me, guys. I'm just come. I just I'm just getting better. I've been ill. Um. So also, how do you? Yeah. So the color skin. Back to this color skin. I personally am good with colors. I'm very very particular about colors. I I I don't. I, I when the colors are not right, I'm not always happy. So I take my time with colors. And when clients come to me with colors that I think wouldn't match, I advise them on it. But great tip I'm going to give you now, guys. When you want to, like, if you're if you're charged with deciding on colors for a client, go on to Pinterest. Search color palette. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Search color palette on um pinterest or okay if you were if your color the main color maybe the client has given you pink just go on to pinterest and search color palette for pink and it would bring up all the colors that would go really well with pink so it will tell you the shade of blue that will go well with pink. It will tell you the shade of yellow that will go well with pink. And then after that, another thing you need to get, there's this thing that Qualitex has. I should have brought it with me to show you guys. Um, it's a color like, um, I've forgotten what it's called now. You know I'm always forgetful with names. But Qualitex has it. If you're in London, I know the wholesalers, they have it. Um, um, it's a color chat. Thingy. And he has all the colors of balloons Qualitex has. Thank you. Thank you. He has all the colors of balloons Qualitex has. And he has all the five inches, all the super agates. He has all the fashion colors, the standard colors, the pearl colors. He has the, the metallics. So when you have that, you could use that chart to create custom colors yourself. All you need to do is just pick two colors that you think, okay, I, I, I might be able to like create a color from this. Put them inside one another, blow it up and check if it's the color you want and you're good to go. So make sure you get that color chart. It's from Qualitex. It has all the colors of Qualitex balloons in it. It's 15 pounds before VAT or so in the UK. I don't know how much it is in the US, but it's a great tool to have. So you can get that. Colors, that's for colors. So use Pinterest or the color chart. Um, so the next question, okay, so that's all from Leave Love Lola Smith. So the next question is, how much do you charge for your balloon garlands? Yeah, good question. My charges for balloon garlands. So I have a set price that I would not step out of my house if I'm not getting paid for that because I think balloons are not cheap. And especially now, where everybody wants double stuffed, I do not think I should work that hard and not get paid for it. So, my starting price for garlands, that barest minimum, barest will be, and that would be for a mini garland, will be two fifty pounds. That would be. The, you know, barest minimum, 250 pounds, nothing below that. And I see people charging 120 pounds for proper, beautiful work. And I don't know how you would make anything from that. Um, a lot of people say, okay, um, um, but nobody's going to pay for that in my area. Please don't be like that. Don't, 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 don't. You, you deserve to, to earn for your work. You deserve to be paid. We, we all need to be paid. People pay for flowers. So why wouldn't they pay for balloons? Especially balloons where you have to do double the work you have to do on flowers. So please make sure you charge for your work. There's, if you are in the UK, but I think if you're in the US, you should be able to use this, uh, use this tool. It's on balloon market. It's, um, it's a balloon um, uh, cost... Uh, uh, <laughs> yes you you have to figure it out in in dollars yes <laughs> 
So it's a um, um, balloon market. They, they have a costing sheet, a, a job cost form. Yes, sorry. It's called a job cost form. That's what you need to use to calculate. Once you've used it to calculate your gallons, you would know how much, how much you need for every time. Just that one time. Once you use it that one time. So please make sure you use a job cost form. The job cost form would help you to put in the amount of balloons. And it's a virtual one on Balloon Market, I think. And on the Qualitex website, I think it's there too. And I know I have, I, I've done a video on pricing on my channel. Let's talk pricing. It's on there. I really talked about pricing there and where you could, you know, get your job cost form is in the description on that video. Get a job cost form, put the amount of balloons you're, you're using. You need to calculate your time. That's what people forget. The cost of balloons. So, for example, I'm doing a double stuffed balloon for three colors. And I have to buy each size of each color. Do you understand? So, I spent like almost 100 pounds on that. So, how much would I have left? By the time I calculate my... my my transportation, the time I spent in ordering balloons, the time I spent in speaking to the clients, because speaking to clients too is all about my time. I, I took time out to speak to the client. Yeah, so I have to get paid for that too. The time I spent on uh, um, designing, because there are times I have to draw out what I'm going to do. I just don't put, I don't, I don't think, up, think up everything in my head. I have to draw it out too. I have to write it out. You know? So all those little times I have to get paid for. I have to pay for my insurance because I have insurance. I have to pay for my fuel that is going to take me there to the client's place. And I get hungry at the venue. I would want to eat. So I have to pay for my food. So all those things, guys, you need to pay for. My overheads. All those things fall under my overheads. So you need to calculate every little bit of it. So I don't get how you're going to do a balloon garland for 120 pounds. How? 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 How is that possible, guys? Please. See, even like years ago, yeah, when, like five, seven years ago, we didn't even charge 120 pounds for certain designs. Balloon columns where for like 80 pounds, 90 pounds, 100 pounds, that's what they started from. Balloon columns, just the column. But now I see people pricing columns at 20 pounds. How? How is that possible? Where are you getting your balloons from? And you have to use quality balloons every time because you don't want that client that you've done the work for, you don't want them not to come back. You want them to come back another time. So you need to make sure you're using good products, good supplies, if, if you don't get this job, trust me, you'll get the next one. Don't think, oh, my competition will get all the work if I don't know. If you want to be in the business for many years, for that long, you need to start making money out of it. Because that's your livelihood. That's your, your time you're giving out for free. Yeah, guys. So I'm going to leave that. I'm passionate about pricing. Exactly, it pops. It pops, cheap balloon, they, they pop even before you leave the venue. You know, even clients know. I've had someone that I, I, I gave her a price and I think I was just like maybe a hundred pounds more than the other person. And she went with the other person. Then she came back and started crying and saying to me, uh, um, the person used horrible balloons for me. I wanted good balloons like you used, blah, blah, blah. Well, it has happened. The party is gone. There's nothing you can do about it anymore, you know? Um, sorry, I need to put on my light. Yeah, it's better now. <laughs> I've got to put on the light. Can you imagine? Okay, let, let's move on to the next question. I'm going to stop very soon and then we continue next week. I don't want this to be too long, if you guys get me. I don't want it to be too... Okay, so the next question. So that last question was from Faith Fanatic TV about my prices. Our next question is from Vanessa Froget. She said, thank you so much for all your videos. I am decorating for parties and fundraisers, but not making money. Practicing, allow gallons and, um, 
practicing gallons and centerpieces at home and with family and friends. How did you get started? I am self-employed by another business with balloons will be fun. Um, I talked about how I started at the beginning of the video, what made me start, the reason why I went into balloons. So you can just watch from the beginning um, to get how I started. So the next question is from Raquel. Um, how, how I'm doing my very first balloon garland and balloon bouquet and I'm so scared. On an average, what's the smallest balloon garland size and the amount of balloons used? I've talked about the amount of balloons. Um, I don't believe in counting my balloons. I just make sure I have enough. So that is one of the reasons why you need to charge right. Because if, you're, if you just count a certain amount of balloons and you don't have extras, then what happens? Then you, you, you might end up disappointing the client because you've not like bought enough balloons. And the reason why you've not bought enough balloons is because you're trying to save money. You're trying to make money out of the little money you've charged the client. Do you get? So that is another reason why you need to charge because you're going to be buying more than the balloons you need for that job. You just don't buy the exact amount. You need to buy more. More than. So if you're going to be needing like 100, make sure you have like 150. Not because 50 is going to pop, no. But just because you need to have that backup. If you get what I mean. Or make sure you have backup at home. Um, so she asked about... The smallest size garland. There isn't any small size garland. Um, I know people do like, they count it from like foot. So maybe like three feet. And three feet is like this. So it really depends on the client or who you're doing it for. So you could count by feet. Um, but then again, when you count by foot and feet, uh, feet, you need to know like, you know, the width how how bulky it's going to be so it's kind of like tricky to you know as long as the client or the person you're doing it for has given you a size then that makes it easier okay the next question is from tara joseph um you are super informative how do you come up with your concepts do you just stick to a theme or make up as you go along um like i mentioned earlier a lot of times yes that's another good advice you need to see the space but it's not every time because some people are not willing if you're going to go and see a space make sure you get a deposit before you go you just don't go and see a space without getting your deposit no make sure they de you know they paid you a deposit or they pay for your travel to go and see the venue you know like if you're calling a plumber to your house even if they're not going to go and they're not going to do anything in your house they're going to still charge you for call out they will charge you for call out charge. So you to, you need to make sure you charge for call out charge. Do you understand? Yeah, you need to charge for call out. So before you see a venue, so it's if a client is not willing to do that, then you tell them to send you a video. Oh, pictures, videos are good. So once you have a yes consultation consultation fee, yes, absolutely. So um, if they are not in the beginning, I didn't do that. I've gone to, uh, there was a time, that was like eight years ago, I went from London to Buckinghamshire. And that's like two hours away or so from London without taking money for color. And I didn't get the job. So I learned my lesson from there. So I understand if you've gone out to a job and you didn't get money before, you know, before going. Do you get me? So make sure... Yes, you get a video. Yes. So make sure you get paid something before you go. Um, so back to Tara's question. Um, so do you stick to a theme or you make them up as you go? Um, most of the time, my clients make it easy for me. They tell me, they give me, hi, Tina. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, then you can take the um, consultation fee out of what they pay you. Yes. 
You need to take the money out of, yeah, you take it out once they pay you. You do not take it, you do not just go without taking it. You take it first, then you tell it's like a deposit. And you don't refund it back to them if they don't give you the job. That's yours, because you spent your time with them going to see the venue. Okay, so um, back to the theme. Clients tell me what they want from day one, but I get some people that just tell me to do my thing. Um, so once they tell me that, that that is the one I love. The people that don't, the people that don't, um, that do not, uh, what was I going to say? Sorry, the people that do not give me themes, they, um, they, they, they are the best clients ever. They, they make my job. They are the ones I love. Because then you're, I'm able to like be creative. I'm able to like show myself. I'm able to like wow them. So what I do is I I research. Um, if if maybe I, most of the time I suggest a theme I think I like, I think would be good, would be nice. You know, there are some things that are so they are so fabulous. There's all how you do them. They will look beautiful at the end of the day. So I just end up suggesting to them, and they agree with me. And then I just start researching on it. I go on Google, put the theme on Google. Um, yes, yes. The ones that trust your creativity, yes, they are the good ones. You know, they, they just tell you, just do your thing. And that's when you can show how good you are. You can, like, express yourself whatever way you want to express yourself. Yes. Pinterest is good. You know, I mentioned it with the color palette bit. So you go on Google, Pinterest, Instagram, put the theme in the hashtags. Stuff will come up of other people, of what other people have done from there. Because creativity is contagious. So seeing someone else's work, you don't have to like copy what that person has done. No. Seeing it alone will give you that inspiration to do your own thing. Do you understand what I mean? So just Google and at, or Pinterest or Instagram hashtags, you know, section, and you would be flooded with so many ideas. On my, I'm on my phone, most of, even my kids are always like, oh, sorry guys, there's a call coming in. Sorry. <laughs> and my kids, they're always like, um, yes. Make it your own inspiration. You see other people's stuff, yes, but put your own stamp on it. Do not, you know, do not copy what they've done, but draw inspiration from it and make your own wild thing. Um, so, guys, we're already going into 30 minutes, and I don't want this to be too long. I don't want you guys telling me I talk too much. <laughs> so, guys, um... I think we should continue this next week because there's still loads of questions I have to answer. Um, I have not answered Chante's questions. I have not answered quite a few, few people's questions. So we would continue next week, guys. Are you good with that? Should we continue next week? <laughs> no. <laughs> Because I don't want to bore you. This, if this is too long, the next person that comes on would get bored easily. Do you get, guys? But if it's broken up into... <laughs> thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you so much for the love. Okay, let me just answer two more questions and we'll continue next week. Yeah? We'll continue next week, Friday, I promise. And we might, we, we might make this a thing where I come on like maybe once in two weeks or once a week and you know just share nuggets with you with you guys um let me tell me what you think if we're gonna make this if we should make this a thing i don't mind uh purchasing okay we can do that next week uh what i'm gonna do is because what i did was i put up a post on my community for you guys to like let me know your questions so if you've not put your question yet, please go on the community section of your of my channel and just put your questions and we would continue next week. But I'm going to answer two more questions this week. Yeah? 
please make sure you turn on your turn on your notification. So next week Friday, 9 p.m. We're gonna come back live again next week Friday. So let me answer two more questions before I go. Um so um Chante is, um I don't know if I pronounced your name right. Um your Thank you so much for being a fan. Thank you, thank you so much. So your first question was, do you plan out majority of your designs ahead of time? Um, yes, you have to. I'm in the bathroom, I am thinking designs. I am on my bed, I am going through pictures on Instagram. I am thinking as in every me, even when I don't have a job ahead of me, I am thinking about design, about creating, about doing stuff. So I am always like on it, on it, on it. I'm always doing that. If something comes into my head, I could draw it out. So I have, I'm like, I don't know how to draw really well, but I would still draw something out when I want to do. So I take, yeah, I take time. I plan ahead. As long as the client has booked and paid a deposit, yeah, I start planning. Number two question from Chanda is, um, which technique do you prefer? Tying necks and balloons together using fishing line or using 260s or a combo of them? Um, yes, you won't sleep. You're always online. Um, so the question, what I have initially I started off with using um, fishing line, but of recent I've started um, preferring 260 cues instead of fishing line. Uh, with 260 cues, they are easier on the balloon. With fishing line, when pulling, it could break the balloon, it could pop it. Um, and so also I, um, I hear it's bad for the environment. So, and you know, we need to like, you know, work really hard to protect our world. So little things like that, we need to like reduce how much we use them. So I would rather use a 260 Q because I know balloons are biodegradable. It will still go, you know, it would, it, it won't affect the environment in any way, you know? So yeah, 260 Qs are good to use. And I've started transitioning into using that 260 cues um so the next question is what is the best glue dots to use please glue dots it's a don't bother best thing to get when it comes to gluing balloons together is either you use balloon bonds the ones that come in the um the yellow box balloon bonds or you glue dashes. Now, there's uh, there's this new pack of you glue dashes I've started using. I'm gonna try and look for it and put it in my Amazon store. It comes in um, it comes in um, like a box, and in the box there are three different types. It's got the strips. It's got the small cube ones that you would get in a regular one. Then it's got like the roll one, like the tape one. So what I've discovered is if the little square ones don't work for me, the strip ones would work because they are kind of like longer. So when you cut them into strips, the strip ones comes in squares, mini squares. So you could cut it into small long strips. And so when you use the long bits on the spot, if it doesn't glue up here, it will glue here. I hope you understand what I mean. So I'm going to try and show it in my next video. Yeah, I know a lot of people talk about the low temp glue gun, but I, I, I don't trust glue gun that much. I prefer you glue dashes or the balloon bond. Balloon bond is quite pricey, but you glue dashes... But then again, with balloon bond, you get a lot out of it. So you can just use that. Um, do do you, majority of your bookings come from social media, word of mouth, etc.? Yes. Most of my bookings come from Instagram, 
from word of mouth. Yeah, people that have known me for many years would come back if they have another party or they refer me to their friends. So yes, a lot from Instagram. And, it, and I've just started using Facebook again. I stopped using Facebook years ago, but I started using it back again during the lockdown. And yeah, from for small jobs, because people on Facebook, sorry if you're a Facebook person, a lot of them do not want to pay. But with Instagram, I get the right clients, if you get what I mean. Don't, it's not like I don't get the clients that don't want to pay to. Okay, yes. Okay, we'll talk about how best to market on Instagram next week. Yeah, we'll do that with the next week one. Um, so, yeah, word of mouth and social media. We'll talk about it next week. Um, two more questions, then we go. How do you prevent your balloon gallons from becoming too bulky? Um, what I do is, um, I, when I'm, when I've done the first garland before adding the other ones, once I, once I start adding, I step back to look at what I'm doing and I continue adding. So it's not like I just keep doing it. Like the way I do when I'm doing the videos, you know, I just keep on doing it because I'm doing a video. But when I'm on the job, I take my time. Especially when I'm doing a balloon bouquet. I take my time when I'm doing a balloon bouquet. I sit on the floor and take my time and think as I do it. So you need to be thinking, looking at what you're doing, stepping back. So that is why you need to make sure you have enough time. That is why I prefer to blow up my balloons before I get to the venue. That is why I even sometimes I would have done the garland and I'll just go to the venue to add the top ups. So yes. Step back, start from the bottom to the top. Okay, balloon. Okay, let me see. Your question was balloon ceiling. How do I? Uh, yes, with the balloon ceiling one, do not do it before you get to the venue. What I've discovered is when I blow up the balloons for the balloon ceiling from home. Um, it it doesn't sit upright but when i'm at the the venue and i'm blowing it up tying it the way i'm supposed to tie it and letting it go up immediately it stays up i don't know why but that's why i've discovered that even when i finish blowing it up and i let it stay for a while and then bag it when i get to the venue it would not stay up but when i um um blow up at the venue itself and let it go immediately it stays up so you need to make sure you tie it the way i show in my videos you know tie do not tie the ribbon onto tie the the mount of the balloon over the ribbon if you get what i mean so that's the best way for it to stay up Absolutely. Look at your deck or take a pic and your work before you leave just to see where you need to perfect. Sorry, I missed someone's question. Um, check my video on, on um, ceiling balloons. You would see I, I, I show how to tie. Check it. Go and check all the videos I did on ceiling, ceiling balloons. Yeah, you see how I tie it. Um, so guys, we are going to continue next week. If you have any more questions, I'll put up a post in the week next week and then you put your question on there and we'll continue next week, Friday, 9 p.m. Okay. 9 p.m. We will talk more guys. And please do let me know if you would want us to continue doing this, like maybe once a month or twice a month i'm open to suggestions willing to hear what you guys have to say thank you so much for joining me this night i'm off to my bed now i'm tired <laughs> thank you so 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 much i appreciate you guys please remember if you are not subscribed yet because i see that a lot of people watch the videos and they are not subscribed yeah 
Make sure you subscribe, share the video. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Yes, 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 yes. A picture, yes. That's another thing I do. When I step back to take pictures, I get to see what I've done. And I get to see if it looks good or if it doesn't look the way I want to. So yeah, you have to have a good camera phone. Just before you, the, the, phone, the phone will tell you if you need to make any adjustments. Yeah, that's what I do. All right, guys. See you next week, Friday. Yeah, and yeah, Tuesday uploads. I'll see you Tuesday. Not live, but live on Friday. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Bye. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs>